I have a treat for you today. We are actually going to the Yucatan and one of the classic iconic dishes from the Yucatan is cochinita pipil. It is marinated pork with citrus and achiote paste. You wrap it in banana leaves and you bury it in a fire pit and let it cook all day. You pull it out of the ground, invite all your friends over and you make tacos. It is an amazing party dish. You boys, I hope you're hungry because there's gonna be lots of food today. One of the signature flavors in the Yucatan come from recados. They're essentially flavor pastes. They're made with like very amazing aromatic Mexican flavors. This is the red recado. It's made with annatto seeds, citrus, spices. It's really, really delicious. It's definitely what is used to make cochinita pipil. It's also used to make um, tacos al pastor. One of the other recados that I really like, it's basically like a dry seasoning. Uh, think of it like a seasoned salt. It's an all-purpose seasoning. You can put it on fish, on chicken, but I'm gonna make it, I'm gonna make a, a pretty decent amount of it and I'm just gonna keep it in my pantry so that I can use it for steaks and other rubs. One of the things that I love about Yucatecan mercados are the citrus. There are actually some markets like out in the streets that they don't sell anything except citrus. And there are things that I'd never seen before, I'd never heard of, I've never tasted. So what I've done is I'm using things that I can find here in Mazatlan that I know that you can find in the US. So grapefruit, oranges, and limes. And so together with this combination, I'm going to replicate some of those more exotic citrus flavors that exist in the Yucatan. So we're just gonna juice all of these and we're gonna, this will be the base of the marinade for the pork. I'm gonna throw all of the ingredients uh, for the marinade in the blender just to blend it up and you'll bring out a lot more of those flavors if everything's just blended and it'll make for a very smooth sauce after the pork is cooked. Secret ingredient, recado rojo. All of my juice, two teaspoons of the recado, 20 grams of salt. Okay, the marinade is done. We're going to prep the meat. I'm using a pork shoulder. I think it's actually, it's one of my favorite cuts of the pig. I think it has some of the best flavor and it can take really quick cooking if you cut it really thin or it can take really long, slow braises. There's a decent amount of fat and marbling or you can even leave some of the, uh, the skin on it and you'll get even more fat and flavor. And so I'm just gonna cut this into like two inch pieces. It cooks faster and more evenly if you cut everything roughly in the same size. Okay, and now everything goes into the bowl. And I'm gonna add my orange zest. Lastly, we'll take our blended marinade. Oh my God, it smells so good. Also, this color is really incredible. And then this just gets poured over. Okay, so I'm gonna cover this up. We are going to refrigerate it and let it marinate for probably 12 hours, and then we will cook it. But actually I have a swap, so we're not gonna have to wait. It might tear, but we'll see. Two, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> Well, anyway, so you get the idea. <laughs> We're gonna toast the banana leaves. This is going to give us some incredible flavor. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna turn on my largest burner on high. I'm gonna put the leaf directly on the grate and you'll see once it gets that like shiny, beautiful green color, you will go the other way. And then you just lay that into your, whatever you're going to bake this in. I'm using a cast iron Dutch oven. You can also do this in the oven. You can put these on a sheet tray and then run them under the broiler. Again, you're not looking for like a lot of color or a lot of charring. You just wanna get them really soft and you wanna get them really fragrant. Banana leaves are actually not that hard to find. You can find them in the Latin section of your grocery store uh, or the fresh produce section. I have 
my amazing marinated pork. It smells so good. Oh my God. These are definitely the flavors of Yucatan. Okay, so I'm going to put this into my prepared Dutch oven. Basically, I'm just gonna throw all of this in. Oh, make sure you get all of those juices in there. You can pull the orange zest out, but I really like the orange flavor, so I'm gonna just leave them in. And now I'm going to cover this up. So you just wanna wrap the leaves around the meat and I'll take my additional leaves. This again is just really more for flavor, but also there's like this dramatic reveal and I'm all about drama. But when I've had this dish in the Yucatan, it always comes table side and there's this big reveal where you open up the banana leaves and you get like all that steam and all those amazing smells coming out. It's like really, really incredible. I'm doing this in cast iron. Uh, if you have enamel cast iron, that's great. Um, I think that a good heavy lid is really important because you're really locking in all of the moisture and you're allowing this to basically really gently cook in your oven at 250 degrees for a couple of hours until the meat is just falling apart. I am actually gonna do this on my grill because I want to get some of those really smoky notes that are very, very Yucatecan. I'm using mesquite hardwood charcoal to give me a really, really nice smoky flavor. So this is gonna take a little while to cook. I'm gonna pour myself a Topo Chico and then I'm gonna tell you a little bit more about the Yucatan. Cochini de Pipil is definitely the signature dish of the Yucatan and I've eaten it all over, but there was one place in particular, there's a, a maestro, his name is uh, Silvio Campo. He has a really famous restaurant called uh, Pueblo Pipil. He is the equivalent of an awarded pit master like uh, that you would find in the United States. He was like nice enough to actually show me how he cooks his cochinita. He has five pipil. So the pipil is actually a pit. It's a, a pit that's dug in the ground and their restaurant, they have five of them and they pretty much cook most of the dishes in the ground. He puts in his cochinita, he puts in beans, he puts in tamales, and then covers it up with banana leaves and then puts the, the dirt on top. And so what you end up getting is like all of these flavors, all of that smoke, all of the, the minerals that are in the, the dirt. One of the challenges of writing this book was taking recipes like that, that are so dependent on the flavors of place and trying to recreate that in another location. I wanted to create a dish that was easy, that would give you like a taste of the Yucatan. Really what I want you to do is, I want you to buy a ticket and go down and visit um, Pueblo Pipil and taste these amazing Yucatecan flavors. I want you to go and visit the cenotes and swim in that beautiful crystal clear water. It's a beautiful country. There's so much to explore. There's so much to see and do and experience. I was thinking about this dish, I knew that red onions had to be a part of this dish. It's very classic. The pickled red onion on your taco with the cochinita pipil, it's definitely a must. But I wanted to pull some of those like really aggressive, harsh notes out of the onions. And the way that I learned how to do that is just let them soak in hot water and a little bit of salt for like five, 10, 15 minutes and they'll actually be a lot more palatable. And they'll also get a little sweeter, which I like also. While that is sitting, I'm going to make some more juice. Get ready, you're gonna start coughing in a few minutes. We're gonna start the charring portion of the video. Um, so I've got my comal. Uh, you can use a griddle, you can use a large skillet. What I like to do is I like to line the skillet or the comal with a piece of foil. This is your insurance policy that you're not gonna mess up your skillet. And also, like especially when you're uh, charring tomatoes, if you put them down on a dry skillet, they're gonna stick to the bottom and you're gonna mess it up. So this way, cleanup is a lot easier and we're ready to start charring. Okay. I'm going to turn that on high. 
and all of these guys are gonna go skin side down. These two condiments that we're gonna be making, the salsa tatemada and the cebollas encurtidas, are both gonna have charred components. So to save time, we're gonna char all the vegetables at once and then we'll divide them out and make the two condiments. Everything is beautifully charred and you can see like it's seriously black. This is exactly what you want. Everything is ready to go. I wrote the recipe for the salsa tatamada to be made in a blender because it, honestly that's like the easiest way to do it. What I'm going to show you is the more fun way in the molcajete. patio actually smells amazing. So this is the big reveal. The spices. This is where you really get that smell of the Recado de Toro Clase. Oh, look at that. And these beautiful toasted banana leaves. And that amazing cochinita. So this pork is falling apart. So what I'm gonna do is, while it's still in the pot with all of these incredible juices, I'm gonna take two forks and just break it up and then just mix it together so like all of that juice is just soaked up by the meat. This is a meal that you need to serve with family and friends. This is not something that I'm just gonna eat by myself. So we're gonna put the camera down and we're just gonna like eat like a family because I love these guys. So put your camera down, Jerry. Sorry, Sebas. I'll make, I'll build you a taco. <laughs> Salud! I really want you to make this dish. This is a crowd pleaser. It's so much fun to invite your friends and your family over to make this dish. You are absolutely gonna love it. Your whole house is going to smell like the Yucatan. And on the next episode of Mi Cocina, we're going to the state of Tabasco on the Gulf Coast. We're gonna be making an ulichi, which is a mole blanco. Make sure you hit like and subscribe so you will be notified as soon as that episode of Mi Cocina comes out.